beautiful humans. Today I wanted to talk about this guy right here, the Marshall Minor 2 Bluetooth earbuds. So uh, I actually picked these up recently as sort of a middle ground in between my everyday earbuds and my working uh, Bluetooth earmuffs, which I need to do uh, sort of talk about in a bit. But let's just take a quick look at the packaging to start off with. Very, very clean in the front. Bluetooth, 12 hours of wireless playtime. That tells me everything that I really need to know off the bat. It has a micro USB charging cable, a user manual, yada, 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 technical specifications. Okay, so it has a 14.2 millimeter dynamic driver. It has frequency response between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, which isn't bad. It has, I actually don't know what the sensitivity means. It has Bluetooth 5.0 with Qualcomm uh, APTX and it weighs 22.5 grams. Uh, da, 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 da. So as you might be able to tell from it being Blue Point, Bluetooth 5.0 instead of 5.2, these have been out for a little while. Uh, I didn't need something that was brand new. In fact, getting something brand new would have actually been a bit of a detriment to me for two key reasons. The first one of which is most, like the new hotness, I guess it's been hotness for a little bit now, but the hotness in wireless is two things. It's true wireless, quote unquote true wireless, and it's also active noise canceling. And under most circumstances, this is not necessarily a bad thing. However, for what I want to use these for, active noise canceling is actually, is actively harmful. So what do I mean by that? Well, I am looking for something that I can wear when I'm working with power tools, something that's not particularly loud to the point where I need my like full blown heavy duty earmuffs but something where the my regular headphones won't cut it. And the reason my regular headphones won't cut it is because active noise cancellation, when you're dealing with very, very high pitched and very, very quick noises, like for example, the type that the belt sander makes, doesn't work very well. And you actually just end up having twice the amount of noise, which can be very uncomfortable. So we have the user manual, which is just straight up a little book. Oh, and it folds out to show. Oh, okay. So it's in all of the different languages, which is why it's a little book, like actually all of the languages. You have English, Arabic, but uh, I'm not going to read them all. Bulgarian, Czech, Danish, German, Estonian, Spanish, Finnish, Greek, all the way down to like simplified and traditional Chinese. Is there any others? No, that's all of them. But for my purposes, uh, this is the relevant information right here. It's got a quick start guide, three steps, push and hold the control knob, uh, power on off, play pause, skip forward, skip back, fast forward, rewind, turn up the volume. So these are all based off of how many times you press the button, which, uh, Huh. I don't know what I think about that. Oh, no, it's not. Hold up. So this actually does a poor job. The device layout guide does a very, very poor job of indicating how this works. It's actually much easier to see off of this little image right here. So as you can see, uh, you press and hold it to turn it on. If you press straight down, uh, it's a pause. If you push it to the side once, you skip forward. If you push it to the, si to the other side once, you skip back. If you press and hold it, you apparently speed through. Uh, same thing, press and hold the other direction, you speed back. If you push it upwards, you're gonna get increase in volume, push it downwards, decrease in volume. And then you can answer calls and you can turn on and off your mic, which is pretty interesting. There's a battery level indicator, which fair enough. The book itself looks quite nice, but I don't particularly need this many pieces of paper. And then there's an additional, oh my god, this one's a roadmap. Uh, and it's also in all of the languages. And this is your legal notice, your FCC statement, yeah, whatever. 
important safety instructions. Do not throw it in the garbage can. This has a lipo battery in it, so that's bad. There's magnets involved. Um, don't deafen yourself with headphones. Again, this is way, way, way too much paper, but whatever. The box is really nice, but it's a little bit much. Like, I don't think... This specifically, I don't think we needed this sleeve specifically. I think that just this would have been more than enough. It's all cardboard, so I can recycle it, except for this little tab, but... <laughs> uh, but whatever, on the little tab, that's not the end of the world. But overall, I do think the sleeve was a little bit unnecessary. And then the headphones themselves are this little box in a box in a box. So, is this like cardboard? Hold up. Well, package gets even more. Haha. -ha. Okay, so. And is this. Why is this so much more difficult than strictly necessary? We're going with just the grab and pull method. It's nice that it's cardboard. I can recycle all of this, which is good and is something we need to see more of. Yeah, okay. That takes care of that. And then we have, I'm assuming this is our charging cable. Yeah. Another piece of cardboard. I get it. Presentation, whatever. At least it's cardboard so I can recycle it. The cable comes with a bread tie on it, which is not necessary. This is actually one of the nicer uh, micro USB cables that I've seen. Like I don't, micro USB is definitely on its way out. USB-C is taking over absolutely everything because it's a much better standard to have. But like, this is probably one of the nicer included in box charging cables I've seen. Uh, it's slightly textured as you can see on the USB section. And this, the plug section has this nice little relief uh, in it which is just gonna make it last quite a bit longer. I'm not entirely sure what this hook right here is for. Oh, it's so you can wrap it up inside of itself, I think, potentially. Hmm. Does that work? That might be a little hard on it. I don't know what that's for, actually, because it won't, it, the top of this section right here is hooked, so it won't quite fit in there have anything to do with this? No, it doesn't seem like it. Anyway, I really like this. This is going to become my new uh, micro USB cable. This is quite nice. Onto the headphones themselves, they have this little tab thing on it. How do I... Eh. Knife time. Is that helpful? I don't know. No, it wasn't because I didn't make it past the glued part. All right. I don't want to damage the cable, which is why I'm being a little bit more uh, careful than I normally am when I get to play with my knives. But let me just see if I can remove. It's, this isn't even like paper, it's plastic, which is super frustrating. All right. And here we have them. The cord is, it's definitely on the thin side. Which, I mean, fair enough, I completely understand it, but that is a little bit annoying. Uh, the earbuds... Oh, ooh, does this work the way that I would expect this to work, or not? No, this seems to be fixed. Okay. They're nice, they have the Marshalls logo on this little brass section on the outside, which I think is a very, very nice little aesthetic decision. The upper ear spot... It feels the exact same as the actual cable, which makes me think that it might be the actual cable, but if I, oh, it is. Okay, so these are adjustable to the inside of your ear based off of how much of the cable, oh, this feels super gross. Feeding it through, it's not too bad, but it's not exactly nice either. Anyway, you feed this through so it fits in the sort of upper section of your ear, and then the nub and end, this rubberized bit right here, fits inside of your actual ear, and everything is hunky-dory. So I imagine it's gotta be the same for this side. Yeah, so the cable is the exact same. It, again, the cable is very thin. It's not inspiring me with tons of confidence. Like I'm not, I don't think it's gonna snap or anything like that, but like, 
This feels a little lightweight. Anyway, uh, the control box on the back, it has all of its like, don't throw me out immediately. I have lipo batteries uh, button, but the sides are nicely textured. It's got the USB micro cable there. And then this little control knob. Ooh, that's actually. So immediate impression, this is actually a really nice button. Like, it's not mushy, there's a very, very distinctive click when it reaches the end of its travel. Same thing, if you push downwards, there's a very, very distinctive click when it hits the end of its travel. This is nice, and that little brass, it's, I don't believe it's actually brass, it doesn't quite feel heavy enough to be brass, but it does look brass, and it creates this really, really nice look with the Marshall logo into the uh, actual button. So now for the why did I get these? Oh, oh yeah. The, uh, there's magnets in the back of the two so that you can fit this around your neck and wear it like a little necklace when you're not using it, which I think is pretty clever. Anyway, I'm going to stop playing with the magnets and start discussing why I decided to pick this up. So I did pick this up, not just because I like listening to music and like listening to music with lots of different devices, which gives me lots of different feels, which is generally a good time, but I picked it up at, to fit in between my daily drivers and bonk my big heavy duty uh forging ear protection so everything on the table is a bluetooth headphone these are the m3 uh work tunes and these are the jebra what are they the five elites or something like that uh elite 5t whatever early t5s elite t5s i think something along those lines anyways so these are my daily drivers and they're really, really nice. But my big problem with them is that they have got two modes as far as hearing blocking goes. You have either active noise canceling or on the complete opposite side, you have hear through mode. So hear through mode actually enhances the sounds around you a little bit in order to compensate for the natural blocking you get by shoving something in your ears. Whereas ANC plays a opposite tone in order to compensate for the tones that you're hearing in order to block out noise. So if you imagine, I mean, noise is in fact a wave. And what ANC does is it plays an opposite tone in order to cancel out the airwaves so that you don't notice a difference, which is what your ears actually perceive as sound, right? Instead of waving my hands around, I can draw this. So if I have my little notebook here, I find a page that I haven't totally written on. If we have our original sound doing its little wave like so, what ANC is doing like this, so that what your ear hears is no change. What uh, hear through mode is doing, if we have our same little wave, is it's actually enhancing just a little bit crossing over and making each of these sounds a little bit louder in order to ensure that you're hearing things that you might otherwise miss because you have something in your ears. The problem with both of these is that they are very, very bad at handling sharp noises, quick noises, and machine chatter. So if I have something like a uh, electric motor whirring, the ANC mode will actually try to compensate for it by playing an opposite tone, but the noise is so sharp and so fast that it has a hard time canceling it out. So what you're actually getting is this sort of out of sync uh, cancellation where you hear the high pitched tone and then you hear the opposite tone that's trying to play to compensate for it, which is very annoying. And I've experienced quite a few different ANC systems and they all have this problem when it comes to machine noises. So this isn't a fault with the Jebra, it's just a fault with the tech. As for pass-through mode, uh, it does sort of the same thing but worse, where it's trying to increase the noise. Keep bonking the table. It's trying to increase the noise made by the uh, outside sound, but it gets it slightly off too. So now you just have a louder sound for longer, which just wrecks havoc when you're trying to focus or something like that. It's incredibly annoying. On the complete opposite end, these guys are just massive passive blocks. You stick them over your ears. They are rated safety protection devices. These will block out 27, I think it is, decibels of sound, and they will do it 
exactly to that tune. And there are Bluetooth, you can play music through them. They've got an incredible battery life. I actually really like these guys for work, but they are very much overkill for some of the less extreme sounds like, you know, drills going or even my belt sander. It's loud, but it's not loud enough to require something like this to use. And you can't put a mask on with this, right? You can't put on your face shield if you have this on your head, which means that if I'm doing something that requires a face shield, I'm actually kind of stuck using passive uh, ear protection. You know, simple things like these guys, which just stick in your ear, they block out sound, it's kind of whatever, they do a good job. But I want to listen to music. During a day of knife work, right, if I'm making, if I'm working on something like this that has quite a bit of grinding to it in order to get that nice satin, felt satin finish that you can somewhat see there, it does take a bit. And sitting there for, you know, two, three hours just gets a little boring without music, if we're being honest. So I wanted something that fit right in the middle. And that's where these guys come in. They are, they have no noise canceling, no noise addition. They sit very, very passively in the middle. They've been out for quite a while now. They're not by any means a new tech product, but they fit nicely in that sort of center area. So I haven't listened to these guys yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go off, I'm gonna charge them up, I'm gonna connect them to my device and I'm gonna give them a good listening to and then I'll be able to provide a little bit of how I think they're gonna work in that environment and what I think of the sound. Because quite honestly, these guys sound good, but they're very V-shaped, which is what you'd expect. You know, they make good daily drivers as a result. These guys are bass heavy, not to the extent of like skull candies or something like that, but there's definitely more bass in here than strictly necessary. And I'm hoping for something that is a little bit more balanced at the very least, or no worse than my Jebra's. So here's hoping I get something like that. I will be back in just a minute. And we are back. So it's been a little bit, I've actually been using this for a couple months now. It's gone on a couple trips with me. I kind of forgot that I was planning on doing a review. So it's been well used in the meantime, but that just means I have a much better opinion and better formed out thought. So it's not the end of my world. Um, okay. Where to start? Let's start with how well it filled its role. So in terms of using these as sort of an intermediary between my everyday Jebras and my like full blown hard work, uh, M3s, they're okay. They're really, really good for the tools that I want them to be good at. Drills, especially uh, hand drills and the drill press. Does a great job with those. Does a great job with my belt sander. But there are some tools that like they don't do anything for. Very, very specifically what I'm referring to is any type of angle grinder, uh, extreme high speed drills, which I don't use very often. Uh, because metal is hard and it doesn't like high speed, but when I do, these things do not do it. Angle grinders were the ones that I noticed the most. Bandsaws, it doesn't like bandsaws very much. Um, air art gouger does not like the air art gouger very much. So there are, there, there are some things where it just didn't quite fill the role the way that I maybe would have wanted it to. But for the vast majority... Like, the main reason why I wanted this, realistically, is for when I sit there for a full day and just grind out knives, right? Like, if I'm sitting there for six hours, you know, doing a light day of grinding, I want to be able to sit on my phone, watch podcasts, listen to music, do whatever, and these did a really good job of cutting down the grinder itself to the point where I could still hear it, I could understand if there's anything going wrong, but it didn't necessarily make my ears uncomfortable over the course of a day, which is really, really valuable. However, these things are a very particular shape, very, very round, harsh edges. If this does not fit comfortably in your ear, one, it is going to totally screw over any type of sound barrier you have. Like that's, that's just what's going to happen, right? You will not be able to hear properly end all be all. That's, that's what you get, but they fit in my ears. So it's a mute point for me personally. You don't get any replacement tips. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to come off, so I'm going to stop pulling on that. 
Interesting. I was about to say, I haven't had any problems with anything coming unglued, so... But I haven't. Like, it's been... It's been good to use. They're quite comfortable. In terms of battery life, um, the advertised amount was 12 hours, I believe. And I did not ever get that. Yeah, I don't think I ever got that. If I'm running them straight, I can get a good 7 hours out of them. Most of the time, I'm getting closer to 8 or 9. Uh, I took them on a trip with me, flights, full day of that, you know. Sometimes they're playing music, sometimes they're not playing music. And for that, they would stay on for about 9 hours before the battery ran out. Not abysmal, but perfectly fine. Like, just kind of, eh. But there was a few things that genuinely annoyed me, and I'm going to get those out of the way before I get into just the great, what I really liked about this thing. The number one thing that annoyed me the most is this right here. This stupid little button. And that really saddens me to say because I think it's really, really cool. I think having a little D-pad in there is nice. I think it looks really good. But the controls are obtuse. Like, they're just brutally uncomfortable to use and unfortunate to use. And then secondly, there wasn't really anywhere else to put it. But because of where it's put on the right side... This is hanging right at my collar level, so a relatively large amount of times, and by that I mean like maybe three out of ten times that I've worn this, um, it's turned itself off. It's gotten caught on my collar or on my hair, right? Like if I'm wearing a shirt with a collar on it, it will almost always get caught on the collar and turn itself off. If I'm doing a lot of moving, again, this isn't a huge problem when I'm grinding, you know, because I'm just sitting there going, J -j 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 check, J -j -j water, J -j -j. but if I'm doing anything more active than that, if I'm going to town, shopping, if I'm walking around, looking around, playing with wood in the forest, anything like that, what ends up happening is this goes around the back of my neck and it just sort of gets caught onto my collar and then the button gets pressed and it turns itself off which is super annoying, or it starts playing with your music features, turning up the volume, skipping songs, stuff like that, and it's just so frustrating. Um, so that got old really, really fast, and that's probably the one like big thing that I just did not enjoy about this experience is that stupid button, which really sucks. I think it looks good. I think it's a good aesthetic. I think it's an interesting idea, but because of the way the control panel is set up, like if this was... A Bluetooth amp DAC, a very, very minimalist one that had a D-pad like that, it would be so much better, so cool, but because of the way these headphones are set up, I just genuinely hated that button. And that's kind of it for stuff that I really, really did not like. I found them comfortable. Uh, my girlfriend definitely does not find them comfortable. They are way too big for her ears. She hasn't, they don't fit in her ears properly, uh, which is unfortunate. Nobody else that I know of has used them, so I can't speak to a wider audience than just us two. But for me personally, I did find them quite comfortable. Sound quality is definitely pretty good. Um, I would describe it as being anti-V in the sense of I feel like the biggest boost as far as... So if you've ever seen a frequency response graph, it goes across there's probably one up on the screen possibly one for this thing if i could find one um but the way that they generally work is you go from your sub bass you know your really low decimals all the way up to your hi hat your top end that kind of shebang and the place where i feel it has the biggest largest amount of volume in that area is probably the upper mid range vocals and guitar felt really really forward in these which i liked um they're good for work and stuff like that. Taking phone calls is actually pretty nice in these because that human range is right in that upper mid end most of the time. So hearing it is just super, super clear, super crisp, easy to do, cuts out background noise a little bit better. But if I'm listening to something like bass heavy or something with a jazz feel and some top end to it, generally I feel like I'm missing out a little bit. Not tons, like it's nowhere near as bad as my Jebra's or definitely nowhere near as bad as the work tunes, but I do feel it compared to something along the lines of like my Meze 99 classics or Sennheiser, uh, the 560s. 
something along those lines, I definitely feel I'm getting better sound out of. Like I'm getting a better representation of the sound out of. But these are by no means bad, right? And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that they have big drivers for in-ears. Um, like these things run perfectly good. I found them comfortable. They never fell out. If I was done wearing them or if I need to talk to somebody, again, right, just clip them around my neck. And that was perfectly fine. The magnets in them look good. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of audio quality, I quite like them. The cable feels a little flimsy uh, when I'm playing with them, like this on a table. But when I'm actually using them, I definitely don't notice that, which is pretty good. They're subtle enough that if I'm out and about and, you know, don't want to seem like a teenage kid running around with music in his ears, um, I just put my hair down, cover them. Nobody sees them. They're subtle enough that they completely disappear on me, which I like. I can wear them with my hat. I can wear them with face shields and my welding uh, lenses and whatever else I need to wear, right? Like they're out of the way enough, but they're also substantial enough that they fit in that really nice middle zone for me. So yeah, by and large, I'd recommend these. They're pretty damn cool. The audio sounds out of them is great, but to be perfectly honest, they've taken like the main reason why I bought them. I mostly use these things nowadays just as part of my listening experience when I'm listening to like folk music or something like that with lots of that mid upper range. I really like these things and that's definitely the role they've taken on in my personal collection. Um. Yeah, I think that's everything I have to say about these guys. Stay safe and have fun out there.